Uh, in another video, the self-consistent field method is illustrated uh, using a uh, helium atom as the example. Uh, the helium atom contains two electrons and uh, it's impossible to solve the Schrodinger equation of the helium atom. So uh, this self-consistent field method can um, be used to get approximate solutions numerically. Uh, in this video, I'm showing you a much simpler example. Uh, we have two, only two variables here, x and y, and we're going to solve these two equations. Uh, the first one is x times e to the power of y equals 5. The second one is y times e to the power of x equals 7. Uh, how do we solve this? Uh, the simple variable substitution method doesn't work. So what we need to do is we need to do this. We uh, transform the equation so that we can express x as a function of y and then we transform this equation to get y equals 7 divided by e to the power of x and then we make an initial guess of the value of y so we guess y equals 1 once we have an initial value of y so again this is just a number 1 we can compute the value of x easily given this equation. So I'm going to double click this. It's 5 divided by e to the power of uh, this is a value in the cell C4. So this is this value. All right. And then once you have the value of x, you can easily obtain the value of y by doing 7 divided by e to the power of x. And we're using this value here. All right. And then we have uh, uh, just uh, generated um, the values of x and y in step one. And then how do we do step two? We can actually drag it down. We get step two. And we keep doing this. You know, and uh, this is step nine. So if you look at the values in step nine, they are very close to the values in step eight. But let's say we have a very high standard. <coughs> And we want to have the values converge to uh, 10 to the power of negative 8. And then we keep doing this uh, at step 11 and step 12. You will see these two values of x and y match with these two values of x and y. So basically we say, well, this uh, iterative uh, method has reached convergence. And then we do some verification here. So these two values are the numerical solutions to these two equations. So what we're going to do is uh, we're going to just uh, use, uh, uh, let me double click this. We're going to just use this value times e to the power of y. We get uh, 5. Let's see if we get 5. OK, uh, it's very close to 5. The error is roughly 10 to the power of uh, negative, uh, negative 9, actually, negative 9. And over here, uh, again, this is just to verify these two values are the solutions. So we double click this. Again, uh, C16, that's the value of Y, times E to the power of the value of X. Uh, and we hit enter, we get 7.0000000. So really good. Over here, you can see uh, uh, these two numbers match with these two numbers in the original problem. So very good. Uh, this uh, iteration takes about uh, 12 steps after the initial guess. Uh, what if we have a different uh, initial guess of the value of y? So right here, um, I well, th this is the same method. But uh, this time, I made an initial guess um, of 2. Uh, I say, well, Maybe we assign a different initial value for y. So double click this. It's just a number. So number two here. And then we double click this one. Uh, this one, x is equal to 5 divided by e to the power of y. So I'm just doing this 5 divided by uh, e to the power of 2. 
and this two is the initial value of y. It's just an initial guess. All right, and then we do y. And then you can see uh, this number is 5 divided by e to the power of the new value of y. And then this is 7 divided by e to the power of the new value of x. So again, we'll just uh, uh, repeat this until convergence is reached. Uh, again, if you look at uh, this value of x, uh, this is uh, obtained by doing 5 divided by e to the power of y. And uh, if you look at the values at step 8 and the values at st uh, step 9, you see they match exactly to the precision of 10 to the power of negative 8. And then we verify the result. So I'm going to verify the result here. Uh, this is x times 10 to the power of e to the power of y. I'm sorry, it's just x times e to the power of y. You get 5. And then over here, this is uh, y times e to the power of x. You get 7. Uh, what if we make a uh, completely different initial guess? So right here, I'm going to guess a y value is 0 0.05. So pay attention here. We use the same method, but we got different result. So in here, x is uh, 4.688. And over here, y is 0 0.0644. This is very interesting. Uh, it's just because actually there are multiple solutions to this uh, two equations. Actually, there are three different solutions. But anyway, after we uh, use a different uh, initial guess, uh, we found a different set of solution. And we verify uh, if this uh, numerical solution is correct or not, and it is correct. All right. There's a third solution. So it's actually uh, 0 0.8801824444 as the value of y. So uh, this time I'm just pretending I just guessed the uh, solution uh, just uh, just by chance. Okay, so here. And then we compute the value of x, y divided by e to the power of y, and then we compute the value of y, and then uh, to make sure the solutions are self-consistent. We just do one more step. Okay. One more step here. All right, and we see uh, the uh, consistency has been reached. And then we verify the result here, uh, five and seven. All right. So what does this um, exercise tell us about the actual self-consistent field method used in quantum mechanics to solve uh, many electron systems. Well, it tells us one thing. So first, we need to make an initial guess of the solution. Uh, if you used uh, Gaussian before, uh, whenever you try to compute the energy of a system, uh, the program, the Gaussian program, needs an initial guess of the uh, wave function of the electrons. So uh, you have to either specify gas equals Harris or gas equals Huckel or gas equals Kohl or gas equals Reed. Uh, when you use gas equals Reed, that means you have the uh, atomic orbitals or molecular orbitals uh, in a, a different check file and you will read those orbitals from that check file. And again, if you make a different initial guesses, sometimes you get different solutions. Look at this. Uh, you get two different solutions here and here. And why is that? Well, um, just imagine that when you have a helium atom, you can actually put two electrons in the 1s orbital, but you can put these two electrons, one in the 1s orbital and the other in the 2s orbital to get an electronic state. So you have multiple solutions. You have actually... Uh, an infinite number of solutions for the helium atom. And in this case, uh, well, if you, if your initial guess is exactly right, uh, your, the convergence can be reached uh, really quickly. So what does that mean? That means if you have the atomic orbital coefficients 
for the helium atom, atom uh, already converged. Just use that, and then your new computation can be done quickly. All right. So uh, there is one more thing. Uh, if we look at uh, this solution, okay, this solution is exactly the same as this solution. And uh, again, you will see that the initial gas here is one. It takes 12 steps to reach consistency. And over here, the initial gas uh, is two. It took nine steps. So if your initial gas is closer to the uh, final solution, usually it takes a uh, less number of steps. And if your initial ga uh, gas is far away from the final solution, it usually takes uh, more steps. So this, again, is a very simple numerical example to uh, illustrate the uh, self-consistent method. Uh, I put this field in the parentheses because we're not talking about electric field here uh, in this uh, simple numerical example.